Hi, my name is uh, Sterling Chipanga. My name is uh, Bernard Ndango. So we both manage the garden under Chengiro Training Farm. Okay, we're going to talk about tomatoes. So the journey is similar. You seed the same way you're seeding the other vegetable, which is Chinese in the shed. Then it will be there for about four to six weeks. Then after that to come in the field. So next to me is a beautiful crop of tomato. So this one was seeded in January and it's just starting to, to ripen from the bottom as we can see. So this is the fourth month now. It takes about three months to get to this point. So about a month in, a, in the nursery shed, then two months after, then things will start happening. And the variety is Tengero uh, from Steak Harris, Tengero Select. It's good to know the variety as well. So the beds, was, uh, or the beds were prepared in a similar way. So you can see it, it looks with um, mulch, and solid meaning it wasn't dug recently i'll still emphasize the the no tilling thing you only till once and you leave the soil to build its natural fertility and because of that you can see the results this is a beautiful uh, crop of tomatoes and it's beautiful because of the management that has gone into it and the the most important one is how you are keeping the soil. The seed bed was raised a bit because of the rain season I, I, I did talk about to avoid runoff sitting um, or the plant sitting in the soil. Then thereafter, at four weeks old, that range of four to six weeks, we removed or we moved the seedlings from the nursery shed to here. So the spacing here is 30 centimeters. Other varieties will go at 45 if you are using the, the hybrids or the interdeterminant ones in deeper language. So this is at 30 centimeters because this is a determinant and uh, it grows at 30 centimeters, I think we can see. That is between plants. Then from row to row is 150 centimeters or 1.5 uh, meters. Then when transplanting, like I said, you, you consider those other factors there must be moisture in this in the bed, the permanent bed. Then the walls must be large enough to accommodate the root system of the seedling together with the bowl of soil. Then it has to be 30 centimeters deep. Then the timing as well. So if it is a hot day, then you are looking at doing it in the afternoon better or early in the morning, but I always prefer afternoon because soon after there's a night coming, so that gives it a longer time to, to, to establish itself in the, in the new environment. And then a day after basal dressing at five uh, grams per station, then uh, five centimeters away from the plant, then two weeks later or so, 10 to 14 days later, a top dressing. So with the tomatoes because they will stay longer than the vegetable in the in the field so at times we top dress maybe twice or three times depending on the uh, on the huge potential or how we want them to bear the fruit so this one i believe it has been topped twice and same rate so basal dressing five grams per station then top dressing five grams then some time later because what is important again for me is you must build the relationship between you and the plant itself so when you build that relationship you're able to see so when it is lacking the nutrients it do not grow healthy and the leaves will kind of look uh, strange yellowish or pale or say there is a little nitrogen then if you see some paperish kind of stuff then that means uh, there are problems with uh, phosphorus yeah and then the, the fruiting is poor 
you see they're not setting the fruits, then there are issues with potassium as well. So that relationship is very important. And so we don't just apply fertilizer because we've got it. So we have to see, is it needed or not? Otherwise, you are just increasing the production cost. And with the tomatoes, it's very sensitive because if you put a lot of fertilizer, then they'll grow what is known as vegetatively. So they'll put on a lot of leaves and they'll look beautiful, but they'll not give you the fruit. That's a, um, a danger about tomatoes. So that relationship is very important. Because we're just coming out of the rain season, there's a lot of disease pressure during the rain season. It's the most difficult season to grow vegetables. But if you practice mulching, then you can make it. We, we make it. You can see the tomatoes. We, we make it because there's mulching. Because mulching will reduce the splash pack. When it is raining, the water that comes up, that's what we call splash pack. So as it comes up, from the ground or from the soil, at times it comes with the pathogens. And if it comes in contact with the leaves, then the leaves have the potential to get diseased. So what we do is we prune, and this is why you can see this layer open. So we prune the bottom leaves because that's, that's, those are the ones that are highly susceptible to you know, getting in contact with those uh, pathogens. So you prune so that you reduce that contact and also to increase hair flow so that the leaves can or the plant itself as they all can dry as quickly as possible after the rain otherwise if the moisture or the water sits a lot on the on the leaves and it contains those pathogens then the diseases will come up so Bennett who demonstrate how the pruning is done with the other lines going forward this way. So that is very important. Yeah, at this point, just want to show you how we, we prune our tomatoes. Uh, things to follow when going to prune our tomatoes, we just make sure our hands are clean. We wash our hands with soap so that in case we have touched some vegetables which has a lot of fungal diseases. We can easily transfer those diseases to our tomatoes. So we make sure our hands are clean. Then from there we go to our plants. We normally just remove our bottom leaves which are easily can touch into our soil so that the disease can be easily transferred in, on top. So just remove our bottom leaves like this. And remem remember when touching leaves which has diseases, we are not supposed to touch leaves which has no diseases. Because by touching those leaves, we are transferring also diseases to our health leaves. So we avoid touching health leaves after touching leaves which has diseases. Ah, the other thing also, just after pruning, we advise to go through with copper hydroxide, which is a fungicide. Uh, remember when pruning, we are leaving our plants open, which can be easy to catch some diseases. And these are fungal diseases and bacteria. So copper is a fungicide which can easily disinfect our plant by getting diseases. So we go with copper, you spray copper just after pruning. And we avoid pruning, cutting the leaves 
just near to the stem. We should drill like a small distance so that it's not easy for fungal diseases and, and bacterial diseases to, to enter the whole plant. We hope you've enjoyed this episode and learned one way that you can bring life back to your soils. Feel free to leave a comment below or visit us at our website foundationszambia.org.